we go. So generally we'll catch about 50 or so uh, on a 500 hook string. So nine out of 10 should be uh, empty. Uh, you can see that there's no bait left. That's a good sign. That means the fish are at it. Oh, red snapper. Come on, Chris, you can get him. You can get him. All right. Oh, a double! Oh, oh, that's a nice one. It doesn't take long before the deck of the weather bird is covered with red snapper. From the animals that you see coming up, we're taking about a dozen different tissues, body parts. They include things like the inner ear stones of the red snapper so we can determine their age. We're taking liver samples, bile samples, muscle samples, and in some cases, spleen, liver, heart, and brain. 48. Susan Snyder is a graduate student at the University of South Florida. I work with the bottom dwelling fish that we're catching here, looking at their present day exposure to oil and any long term accumulation in their tissues. We take the bile uh, to look at any exposure within the past couple days to oil compounds, and then we take other tissues like muscle and liver to get the long term accumulation of oil in the tissues. We know we're killing animals, but the point is, in order to do these kinds of studies, we have to do this. There's no other way to do this with photographics or anything. This, this, is, this is basically fishery science. This is a male. Amy Wallace is a PhD candidate, also at the University of South Florida. To study fish at, around the time of the oil spill, you need to be able to tell what they're eating, were they in the area of the oil spill at the time of the oil spill, and if so, how did they change and move after that? I'm taking mussel and eye lenses and um, otoliths from the fish. This is an otolith, it's the ear stone, and when we break open their heads, this is what we're looking for. All right, next one. Once you preserve them, you get back to the lab. This is where you're generating your data. Today I've been cutting otoliths on the isomet saw to cut out the center section so that I can get the most material from the otolith. And then at that point, I'm going to put it under the microscope, which will give me the fish's true age. What's great about this job is what you see. It's being out here on the water and being able to see things, not just the snapper and the fish that we pull in. Um, you just never know, uh, besides what you're working on, what you're going to see, um, whether it's on the line or off the line. Oh, oh, look at him, look at him, look at him. Look at he's, he's after him. There's a big shark there. Oh, see, he's got him, he's got him. That's a black tip. The team also gathers information about sharks to share with other scientists. I'm taking some um, yeah. thin clips of the sharks for some of the species for um, Dean Grubbs at FSU. Whenever possible, they return the sharks to the Gulf. Got it. That was an outstanding haul. We got a lot of uh, red snapper. That'll give us a, uh, a number of things. Uh, first of all, a really good look at the contamination levels, the tissues, the blood, uh, but also we're trying to form the age composition of the population. So with so many red snapper, we can, we can see which ones are the threes, fours, fives, and six-year-olds and what level of abundance. So what we're gonna learn from this is basically what the levels of contamination are. Some of the fish are, are quite contaminated and they remain contaminated and they're, they're among the highest contaminated ever seen. Some of the other fish, uh, the, the contamination levels have dropped significantly, like red snapper, and you know that's a good thing. The problem comes in when you actually have exposure to toxic chemicals. It results in things like liver cancer and uh, uh, you know long-term genetic changes and, and other things that may affect the long-term viability of these populations. 